Well, good evening, everybody. It is Sunday night. Let me pull this back a little bit. It, this is Mary with Stamps and Lingers, and I surely do appreciate you spending a little bit of your Sunday with me. I know everybody's busy, and so it's nice that you're taking a few minutes out of your weekend. Um, just checking to be sure on my computer that everything is going. So my plan for today is to show you this pretty Z fold card. It's called a Z fold because you can see it looks like a Z and it is very easy to make but it has a nice little impact for your cut your uh, friends and relatives and anybody who might receive it and this uses the very new like it will be available on Tuesday for customers to order early. This is the Carols of Christmas stamp set and the matching and ever so wonderful card builder uh, card front builders. Uh, the stamps, the dies in this set are just ridiculous. They are so pretty. Uh, let me see what we got going on here. Am I live? Am I live? Yes, I think I must be live. It looks like I got five folks watching. I'm going to refresh my computer here to see what's going on. Hang on just a second. Ah, there we go. Hi, Susan. Hi, Linda. Thank you so much for joining me. And sorry for that, uh, you know, the technical difficulty there. Because, well, you know, I'm technically challenged. What can I tell you? So, anywho. Hey, Sue. Hey, Karen. Thank you for joining. This is the card we're going to make. And this is the bundle that we are going to use. And I hope you all are waiting anxiously to grab it up on Tuesday. Um... I know I would be if I didn't already have it. So let's get started. I'm going to set this aside for a half a second, and we'll talk about card cuts. Um, all of these will be on the blog tomorrow. This will be my card for tomorrow, so you'll be able to see everything. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Verna. Thank you for joining me. All right, so this first piece, this is Pool Party, and I'm going to pull this over. It is five and a half this direction by ten and three quarters, and we're going to do a couple of scorers and folds here in about a half a second. Okay, maybe a little longer than that. Um, then we have, I'm really discovering, have you guys done Pool Party and Tranquil Tide? It's a beautiful, beautiful color combination. I, I'm really liking that a lot. So we have a piece of Tranquil Tide that is four inches by five and a quarter, and the corresponding three and seven eighths by five and an eighth inch uh, for the end panel of Whisper White. Then I've got two pieces of Tranquil Tide at three inches by five and a quarter, and those are for the other two panels, the front and the center. And they also have, we have one piece of Whisper White for the middle panel, and I have one piece of Delightful Daisy DSP. Um, how versatile is this? This can be summery, springy, daisy flower material, or it can look like a winter snowstorm. Uh, I love it. So this is the front panel, and it uh, is also two and seven eighths by five and one eighth. I've got a little left over for my envelope flap and one medium white envelope that I'll put aside. And then I have a piece of Dazzling Diamonds Glimmer Paper. This is two and seven eighths this direction by three and a half. And we're going to cut this down with the Swirly Scribbles uh, Thinlet. So we're going to use this die right here to create um, a snowbank. And we will do that in just one half a hot second. All right, now before I started this, I did a little bit of pre-cutting because, you know, there's watching concrete dry and then there's watching Mary run through the big shot and hello, there's no reason to do that. Nobody wants to see that. So the first thing I did was I stamped the little deer from Carols of Christmas in basic black archival ink and then I cut it with its matching um, the matching deer dye, as it were, and that is this little dude right here. So I cut him out and had him ready. And then I cut one each of the double tree image and one of the single tree out of a little more of that delightful Daisy DSP. And then we're going to do some a little treatment to this here in about two seconds. So I'm going to set that aside. And then carefully stored here on my block. I used the um, 
nighttime dye. That's what I'm calling it. I'm sure that's not the real name, but there it is. Hey, Wendy. Thank you for joining. Hey, Kathy and Paula. I appreciate y'all spending some time. Uh, so I used just a scrap piece of the dazzling, uh, the, mm -mm 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 -mm, the dazzling diamonds glimmer paper, and I cut out a moon and some stars. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside, and I have them stored up so that maybe I can remember them. So when I can't remember where those are, help me remember. Okay, okay. So that, so that. All right. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to sparkleize. It's a technical term. We're going to sparkleize these trees, and I'm going to do that first so that I can then set them aside and let them dry a little bit. So hang on just a second. I'm going to grab a piece of silicone so that I don't get glue all over my paper. And all I'm going to do is take the, uh, hi Neoka. Hey, Verna. Yes, Verna, creative in my vocabulary terms. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely come up with some, some names for stuff when I don't have any other word. Okay, so here's a tip about dazzling diamonds glitter just anticipate it going everywhere. It really doesn't matter how careful you are. It's going to be everywhere. You're going to be sparkly for a while. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this fine tip glue pen and I'm just going to rub the glue, kind of get glue all over this tree like this. And there's not any particular like it has to be so thick or so thin, I don't think. Um, I could probably go thinner, but I really want it to have a good solid coat. And hopefully I won't stick myself to my tree. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Hey, Pamela. I like sparkles too, Susan, and I really like this dazzling diamond stuff. It looks like, it looks pretty to me. Okay, so that's pretty well filled in. Now I'm just going to take my tweezers, my tweezers here, and pick this little dude up. <laughs> there we go. And then I'm going to use my spoon and sprinkle him all up with dazzling diamonds and tap him off. Just make sure I got a good coverage. And then I'm going to set him aside somewhere. Where? Where will I set him? There we go. And then I'll do the other one right quick like. I liked how this turned out. It, it was kind of a stroke of, huh, I wonder how that would work to make the trees with the same paper as the sky and so you'll see when I get done um, what I did to kind of make them stand out a little bit because they kind of, even with the dazzling diamonds on them, they kind of disappeared against the sky. Hey, Jean, I'm glad you're here. Is Judy with you? I hope. Um, even with the dazzling diamonds on them, they kind of uh, faded into the background a little bit, which was okay. It really kind of worked with the color scheme, but I figured if I could do a little something with them, to help them and it's a trick you guys can use on a lot of your die cuts if you take a stamp and write marker and edge the edge with a stamp and write marker you can kind of pick the color that you want I tend to try to stay within the color scheme of my card but that will give you a little bit of help and also it cuts down on sometimes you'll see white edges you can actually see a white edge where you've done a die cut. Now let's see, I'm gonna put my lid back on. All right. What is the brown paper? This is not paper, it's a it's a Ranger silicone sheet. Um, when I first started stamping, I bought this off of Amazon, the only place that is more sacred to me than stamping up is Amazon. Um, and I didn't know any different and it actually works pretty good and it was giant it was the same size as these and so what I did when I started using the grid paper is I cut it down 
So I have one piece that's a half size and then one, two pieces that are little. And it's the same slicky stuff as our silicone mat. But when I looked for it, I couldn't see my silicone mat, and this is what I grabbed first. Okay. So set those aside, already getting glue, because they're going to want to uh, dry for just a few minutes. Hi, Beverly. I'm so glad you were able to join live tonight. I hope, I hope it's worth it and you don't think, oh my goodness, what was I thinking? Okay, so next up, I'm going to go off camera for a half a second, and I am going to... Uh, cut my snow bank here. So this is the top and this is the bottom. So I want my snow bank to be oh about like that right there. Maybe a little less. Right about there. Alright, so I'm just gonna cut that out real quick. Yeah, that's close enough. You know snow banks are not really all that scientific so it doesn't really matter. Alright, hang tight guys. I'm just over here, just out of camera. So, Miss Jean knows this already, but I found out while I was in Huntsville last week that apparently I'm going to get to go to Utah for eight weeks instead of three, which is, um, well, that was kind of a bummer. but. It makes it easier to decide that I need to take all of my stamping things. Three weeks was kind of one of those, ooh, should I take everything or should I, you know, what should I do? So, so I'll be doing that. Okay, so this, even though it looks like a piece of paper with a curvy top, is now a snowbank. So, I'm going to put that aside. Let me show you the Z fold, uh, fold. The Z fold fold. There we go. All right, so I've got my trimmer. Remember, this is five and a half tall by 10 and three quarters inches. So the first thing I'm going to do is score it and fold it at four and a quarter. As you might imagine, let me remind you what the shape looks like, y'all. Um, so when it folds up, it is the same as a regular A2 card, five and a half by four and a quarter wide, which means it will fit in a regular envelope, which is kind of cool. Uh, so, the first, the first fold we're going to do is here at four and a quarter, and then we're going to do another fold three and a quarter inches that direction. All right? So, four and a quarter, and make sure it's my scoring tool, not that I've ever cut my cardstock when I meant to score it and fold it. And then I'm turning it over so that I change up the uh, direction of the fold valley or mountain depending on how you look at it and this one is going to be at three and one quarter all right all right there we go thank you neoka all right so now i'm going to fold and for once i actually have my bone folder where i can find it and i'm going to give that a good a good fold and then i will fold the Z the other direction, like so. Give that a good burnish. And you can already see the Z fold starting to come together, yeah? Okay. So now we can set that aside and start assembling some layers. This is our inner, this is, well, it would be our inner liner on a regular A2 card, but it's this back piece. And then we're going to have the middle, which is going to have the sentiment, and we'll get to it next. And then we're going to have our card front. So I'm going to go ahead and start building the card front itself. And I'm going to do that with some fast views. So do you fold into the valley or into the mountain? You fold into the mountain. I, it took me a long time to learn that, and I'm... I'm not really sure, but I think it could have been Sue Prather who taught me that, who finally set me straight. Somehow or another, the mountain is where the paper strands are weakened a little bit, and so it makes the fold better. So you fold towards the mountain. Go to the mountain, young woman. Okay. Now we're going to take a little fast fuse here and mat this on a piece of Tranquil Tide. Sometimes my check mark is not so check markish. 
and that is self-critiquing because it goes every which way. Okay, now if my noggin gets in the way, I'm sorry, but I want to get this lined up. Alrighty. There we go. Alright. And next up is just a piece of snow. Some snow. And you can see it's the same size as the as the uh, card front DSP. And I'm going to actually use liquid glue for this so that I have a half a second. Um, I have a half a second to be sure it's where I want it to be. Do, do, do. Okay, here we go. And we just want it to be lined up with the bottoms and the sides. Okay, parfait. There you go, it's parfait. All right, so now let's add a little night. Shall we add a little night? I'm going to add a moon with a little bit of liquid glue. Once you get everything cut out, everything goes pretty quickly on this. It's not a very difficult fold. There we go. We'll put a, a moon, and then I'm going to take some stars. I sound like I think feel like I'm getting ready to make some lucky charms or something. And I don't really know why I did this, but I did it on the first one, so I'm doing it on the second one. I'm putting a star on the dots. I, do you have to do that? Of course not. Can you? Sure. Will it make a difference if you don't? I doubt it. Okay. The only place you can't put a star is right here. You just can't put the star there. That is not right. You can't have a star in the middle of the moon. It just will not be right. Please don't ever make a card with a star in the middle of a moon. All right. Here we go. Yes. Hey, Jean. Yes, I actually do prefer the fast views over the snail. It has much better holding power, I think. Um, and it is more long lived in the holding department. So, yes, I like the fast views, even even with its occasional persnicketiness, um, where it tries to be, you know, go every which way and be wonky fied and all that. Even with that, I prefer the fast views over the over the snail. My really actual favorite is liquid glue. Uh, this liquid glue right here is my favorite. This stuff is so good. It is just so good. Um, but I like the speed for the for the big the big things where I'm trying to mat um, DSP and whatnot. Liquid glue just takes a little longer than I want to use. Okay, so getting a little carried away with stars here, but hey, who cares? You can't ever have too many pretty little stars. Okay, so there's that. All right, now, oh yes, I did. I got, hey Neoka, I got the moon and the stars um, from this die right here. I did it ahead of time. And so all I did was just use a piece of scrap dazzling diamonds and I cut this out and picked the pieces that I wanted, which was the moon and five or six little stars. And then I saved them so that I could, you know, amazingly, I was able to find them again. Good question. That's where they came from. Okay, now my little trees. Hang on to your hats, folks, because look at how pretty these turned out. I love these things. I love them. I love them. And they're really not quite dry yet. So I am going to let them set out of the way. And in the meantime, while we're while they're drying, I might have got a little carried away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, might have got a little carried away with the fine tip glue. But that's okay. So if you're in a big hurry, use a small a, a, a smaller layer thinner layer of the fine tip glue. Okay, so what we're going to do now is go ahead and make our inside panel, which is our sentiment, and then the end panel, which is where we would write our message. All right, and this one, it takes me a minute, so you'll just have to be patient, okay? Just be patient, people. Be patient. All right, so let's make the inner panel first, and we're going to do Peace on Earth. Keep that where we can find it. And uh, 
go. And we'll use a stamp of a jig. And we're going to stamp this in Tranquil Tide. Where did I get the magnet sheet? Um, I have been a customer of Stampin' Storage, which is a wonderful, wonderful place. Um, all, all of my inks and dyes are in Stampin' Storage goodies. And if you look on my blog site, um, I have a link right there. That didn't work so good. I have a link right there, and you can go directly there. And, oh, by the way, they're having a, a big 15% off sale right now. So this would be a really good time to add to your stash. Um, I have my uh, inks and refills and markers are in a, in a stamp and storage box, and my ribbons and my punches and my washi tape and all of my dies and uh, embossing folders and they are so sturdy I have taken all of those items that I just mentioned I have carried around all over the country with me in a car when I've traveled so they're very good it's very high quality stuff is it is it pricey you bet but it is worth it because it will be the last kind of storage that you need to buy so please take a look uh, who asked what is Finn doing Finn is outside with his dad doing man stuff I think yep He's outside. He's not under my table, so he's outside. Okay, so this is the, the Peace on Earth stamp in Tranquil Tide, and we're just going to get our um, stamp of mid jig all lined up. And then I'm going to put this in the center, like so, of what will become my center panel on my Z fold. All right, so a little more ink. If you have an empty container from the fine tip glue, fill it with the white. Oh, oh, so then you can get a fine tip of the white Tomba. Oh, that is a good idea. Huh. Well, thank you to your upline. All right, here we go. And we're just going to stamp that down. And let it set a second to get a good... And, of course, since I am on camera, you can assure yourself of the fact that I will not get a good image. So, I will pull out my Tranquil Tide Stamp and Write marker and give this a little touch-up. I always, I, I hesitate to say I'm always kind of glad when things don't go right, because that just is like asking the card-making gods to mess with me for the rest of the video. But, in a way, it is kind of good when things don't go as planned, because then I get the chance to show you how to fix it. Because anybody who tells you that the very first time of every single thing that they do with cards is perfect, well, they might be just fibbing a little bit, y'all. Because we all know that paper and ink can be persnickety and not really cooperative all the time, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. Thank you, Linda. Appreciate the nice words. I was tickled with it. Like I said, the uh, the pool party tranquil tide combination is really nice. I like it quite a bit. Okay, so I'm just touching up where my uh, where I didn't get a good ink image. I may not get too head up here on camera. Then again, I might. I just might. You don't know what I'm gonna do. Half the time, I don't know what I'm gonna do. You know, it's hard to talk and hold your tongue just right so that you don't go outside the lines. Just so you know, that's why I'm getting real quiet because I'm holding my breath. Please don't screw up. I'll be like Scott Carpenter. Please, God, don't let me screw up. Of course, he didn't say screw up. But yeah, we're not going to say that here. Okay, that's close enough for government work right now. So I'm going to put my Tranquil Tide away. Oh, fine tip containers on Amazon. Hey, that's a good idea too, Jean. Okay, so now I'm going to take the little straight line flirty loo thing here. And I'm going to stamp it in pool party across the top of my panel. And I'm going to just go crazy and just kind of eyeball it here. 
So if it turns out bad, we'll know Mary should never eyeball anything. Got lucky. All right. And we'll do that like so. And another eyeball. All right. Close enough. Very good. I'll take that for $1,000, Alex. Okay. And now I'm going to mat this on its piece of Tranquil Tide. Oh, Karen, you absolutely need to get it. You absolutely need to get it. Um, for sure about our paper and ink combo being persnickety. Yes, that's right. See, it can do that. It can just do its own thing. And it always does it if you're on camera for certain, sure. Karen, you absolutely want to get this on Tuesday when it comes available. It is just the coolest set. There we go. Okay, and this is going to go right here in our middle panel. But before I put that on, I'm going to make the end panel uh, because then I can start lining up from the right to the left. Okay, so this is the part that's a little persnickety and you're going to just have to bear with me. Just bear with me, people. Just bear with me, people. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this little snowflake sparkly image and I'm going to stamp it across the edge that is visible when the card is closed and this the way this image works hey Alicia I'm glad you made it all right the way this image is gonna work is we're gonna stamp it like that and then we're essentially gonna turn it over and stamp it like that but I'm gonna turn the paper instead of the stamp because I'm gonna use my stamp -a jig because guess what happened when I first made the card and I didn't use the stamp -a jig yeah mm -hmm, you got it it went every which way from Sunday yep it did all right so I'm gonna put that little cross at the top I'm gonna get my pool party ink back and get my stamp of my jig ready to go. Actually, what I should do is do this correctly, Mary. Don't be goofy. Hey, Linda, how are you today? Um, so, here's a little tip. When you're using real light inks like Pool Party, Soft Saffron, Soft Sky, those are so soft, bleh, so saffron and soft sky, first set your stamp a jig up with a darker dot with a darker ink so that you can actually see the image because otherwise you can't um, and then be sure to clean off your clean off your stamp a little bit but don't get so head up that you move your your image on your block or your stamp on your block because if you do then this stops being accurate okay so now put away the tranquil tie so that I don't stamp Tranquil Tide where I want Pool Party. And we're just going to start right here. Like that. Am I still in the frame, y'all? Yeah, I think so. I'm going to start just like that. And then I'm going to flip the card stock. and start down the line. Flip the cardstock. I'm not getting all too head up about it, but I'm just kind of eyeballing it. But the stamp of a jig does help to stay kind of up against the edge where you want. So the first time I made this card, uh, the second part of this I eyeballed and I did a horrible, horrible job with it. And I thought I could get away with it, but it was going all cattywampus. But I still persisted because I was in a hurry and I snailed it to my Tranquil Tide mat oh, and snailed it into my fold. <laughs> and I looked at it and I was like, oh my goodness. You can just see that so bad. 
So I did the old heat tool trick where I heated up the, the fast fuse and then I was able to pick that card up and then I made it again. So I can assure you by the time I had done this little panel twice and my envelope, because this is how I've decorated my envelope, I was pretty well tired of stamp a jig stamp, flip, stamp a jig stamp, flip, like that. I love my stamp a jig thing too. Yeah, I had to have the patience of Job. It wasn't so bad the first time, but the second time kind of Kind of cranked my jaw, I'm not going to lie to you. I wasn't a happy camper. But I thought, I cannot put that, I cannot in good conscience put that on my blog or show it to the people who show up to watch my video. There's some things you can hide, but not what I had done to it. That is for certain sure. Everybody, you all would have been out there going, oh my gosh, does she see that that is going completely cattywampus? Did she not even look at her card? Oh my God. That's what you'd have been saying. I'm not even kidding. I'm, hang on just a second. Hey, Finn, leave the kitties alone. Finn, they don't want to play with you and get kisses. He's back now in case you couldn't tell. He's come back in with his dad. All right, we're going to put one more there. Finn! Here. We'll see how that works. Oh, good Lord, you guys, we took him to, <laughs> took him to tractor supply today. Mm -mm -mm. You can tell it's been a minute since he did any obedience because he was, he was good. I mean, he wasn't bad or anything, but let's just say he was pretty lax in the, in the obedience department. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm a little embarrassed, but it was all good. He's so sweet. Everybody just wants to see him all the time. Okay, now I'm going to take that flirty little thing here, and this one I am going to do with the stamp of jig as well because this is what caused my heartache and anguish <laughs> with my first go. So this one I'm going to do in... Tranquil Tide. Let me just double check to see which way I went. Yeah, so I want to go that way. Okay. So I'm going to set my stamp and my jig up there. And this one is a little bit eyeballed, but it'll be an it'll be okay. I'm just going to kind of center that this way and make sure it looks like it's parallel to the edge of the card, roughly. And then I'm going to undo that because I just stuck it in the pool party instead of in the tranquil tide. And then we'll put that on like so. And then I'll add one here. Kind of just split the difference, make sure I'm lined up. This one, this is where I came a cropper on my first card. There we go. And then we'll do a final one right here. All right. And just like that. Okay. And pick it up kind of carefully. But static cling. Okay. And then we'll go like so. All right. Good enough, I'll put my ink away before I have it everywhere. And then we're going to put this on its mat. Give it a little shake so that it dries that off. I've noticed that the darker inks, like Knight of Navy, they don't dry quite as quickly. And so it's easy to smear them up. So I'll give them a little, a little shake there. All right, here we go. A little thin hair there. Everybody should have thin hair fast fused into their card. All right. Finny, are you eating cat food, dude? What are you doing, man? All right, here we go. No, he's chewing a bone. He's chewing it loud. Can you guys hear him? Okay. And we'll give that a little turn, like so. Now, we'll start putting these into our card with some fast views.
All right, now we're just gonna get that. This is really just the inside of a card, so nothing very special about it. Just get it lined up like that. Then we'll put the middle panel on. Alrighty. Okay, now the only thing I like to do here that's particularly different is I want to make sure that my tops are lined up so that it looks, well, you know, so that it looks even. I like it to look even. I don't like it to stair step. It makes me upset. Okay. All right. So there's that. And let's set that aside and then see what the status is of our trees. Tree status. Ah, yes. Yes, indeed. Okay. Now, here we go. This is the little trick to help them stand out because you can see when you do a dry fit, um, there. this is a little bit darker portion of the paper. Let me show you something, y'all. So this paper has this gorgeous watercolor wash look, and if you cut your trees out here, it's going to be light. If you cut your trees out here, it's going to be dark. So for this second card, you can see I got a much, I got much darker paper when I when I cut it out. You see the difference there, um, and I like this dark one a lot better. So actually, I think I could get away without edging it, but I'm going to show you. You can see on this one, I, I just took my pen, like so, and you just run it along the edges of your die. And you can do this anytime you die cut, really, is it's kind of a good thing to do, um, because it, it dulls that white edge that doesn't look like you can really see it, but sometimes you can really see it. So. I'm not going to do all of it because I got enough dark paper on here, I think, that I, I can do it without. But that's what I did on the first card. So if you ever find yourself in a place where you need a little definition to your die cut, use your stamp, uh, stamp and write marker. Um, I also will use them like if I make a banner and I don't want to put a mat behind the banner, then I will use this just on the edge of that paper. You'd think I, you'd think a card maker could find so like this. If this was a banner, say, I would just run it like that along the edge. And so what that does is it defines the edge of that cardstock without any additional um, thickness or having to do fancy measuring to get a mat the right size. So there you go just like that. You can also do the same exact thing with a sponge dauber or a wedge of sponge and just flick down the edges like that with a sort of dry sponge and then you'll get a, a shadowy edge on there and that's also kind of pretty. Okay, so just some tips, you know, that have nothing to do with anything, but there you have it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some Dampen Dimensionals on the backs of my trees. On the backs of my trees, and I'm going to use some big ones where I have room to use big ones. Y'all hanging in with me? Are we doing okay? Yeah. Yes, Linda, he is getting on that bone. Do you know what that that bone? I'm pretty sure he is hanging. He is working on that <laughs> moose antler that Amy sent him because his mom's going to Alaska and he doesn't get to go. Okay, so I just put a couple of little ones up there, and I always like to check that you can't see them, and you really can't. I love these new mini Stampin' Dimensionals. Goodness. All right, get a few more on here. I like to really support my die cuts. I can't help it very much. But that means I spend a lot of time putting on dimensionals, right? All right, put that right there. And a couple more down the middle. Okay, now. I'm going to put the single one on first, and then I'm going to add 
my dear to him. Now, I told you once that um, you can use stamp a stamp a magic. My goodness, how embarrassing for me! Can you stamp in dimensionals? And then I use a little bit of glue on that to help you adhere to dazzling diamonds glimmer paper or any of the glimmer papers. But the trick is, of course, that you can't mess with it. You got to you got to put it on there, and then don't keep checking it to see if it's dry and see if it's stuck, because it really will actually stick. Is it going to hold up if somebody starts rugging it? Probably not. But if they're rugging it, then they're they're wrong. They're just wrong. Oh, see now, there's a little bit of stampin' dimensional. That'll be okay. Nobody's gonna see that. They'll think it is a snow dot. Okay, now I'm gonna take my little deer guy. Deer guy. I'm gonna put a little bit of liquid glue on his backside. Not his backside, the backside of him. And I'm gonna stick him to that tree right there and I'm going to stick him kind of far up because I'm not putting anything under him so he's not really supported. Give him a minute to get dry and then we'll pull the dimensionals off of this other tree. Not the dimensionals, the backs of the dimensionals. Hello! Linda, your dog does not like the antlers. I don't know. Well, you know, Finn has a huge chew drive. He will chew everything. This morning, I was pulling knotted tufts off of him, and he snabbed, snagged one out of my hand. So he's got this tuft of black dog fur, and he's chewing it and chewing it and chewing it and chewing it and chewing it, and chewing it um, until he finally had a little tiny wad of wet, nasty dog hair. And we tried to get it away from him, and he was like, nope, it's mine. I got it perfect. It's mine. You can't have it. And then he swallowed it. It was disgusting. It was disgusting. Okay, here we go. One last one. And then a little bit of glue. Just on the ones that are going on the diamond paper and then we're going to put it right about there. I like it. There we go. Alrighty. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the very last piece and it's my least good thing. This is some solid pool party baker's twine. I'm just going to cut a length off. I'm going to wrap it around the bottom. Making bows in public. Not good. I should never do it. Okay. Usually I don't do it like this. Usually I would take a length of the baker's twine and put it around and stick it down in the back with some tape and then I would make another bow because you can see why right you guys are like oh my god the woman cannot make a bow to save her life look at those fat fingers yeah you're right I'm no merry fish with bows I just what can I say they they kind of bamboozle me okay don't judge me all right here we go and then we'll make it look a little more tidy, like so. And then we're going to kind of give it a little pull so that it's kind of in the middle. Kind of in the middle. Don't really care if it's completely in the middle. I mean, there's not really like going to be a bow in the middle of a snow drift, is there? Okay, there we go. And then we'll cut that off. And then we'll pop some dimensionals on here. Thank you, Paula. I'm not alone in bow hell. I'm very glad to hear it. I think I've probably told you that my mother is a 
bow making fool. She can whip out a bow and it's beautiful and it takes her about 3.8 nanoseconds. It's very discouraging, but that's okay. Alrighty, now we'll just pull these off and stick it on the front. And then I'm going to show you what I did on the envelope, and we aren't going to do that now because it's more of that line-up, stamp, flip, line-up, stamp, flip that I think you got. I think you got it. I don't think I need to show it to you again. But I am going to show you something a little funny. All right, where'd you go, card? Here you are. Okay. So lay it out open, and we want to line up the tops again like that and voila et voila one each z fold card with Christmas carols of Christmas and the card builder card front builder thinlets okay so then on the envelope what I did is I um, carefully used my stamp -a jig with the pool party image again you know where I turned and turned and turned and turned and then I used tranquil tide here and then I turned it over wait for it I turned it over to put the little piece of DSP on it ready <laughs> you see the problem here people yes there's gonna be a stamp there and a return address there so yeah, I kind of worked that one, but that's okay. Maybe I'll just say it's unique and different. Don't don't be saying I did it wrong. I did it exactly right. So there you go. Run it across the bottom, y'all, and then put you another piece of the delightful daisy paper on there, and you'll be good to go. But you can take a picture just like that, and it looks just normal, doesn't it? Looks completely normal. All right, y'all. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you are excited and going to purchase carols of christmas and the card front builder thinlets that goes with it be sure to get the bundle and get your 10 percent off uh, tomorrow is the last day to get bonus coupons so if you have things that you want to order so that you can get five dollars off starting on tuesday five dollars off ten dollars fifteen would be nice off of this and I would be not a very good demonstrator if I didn't say tomorrow's the last day to get the essentials pack sign up y'all Okay, thank you so much for the time, and I appreciate it. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.